Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We are back with more Cobra Convergence 7, and I have Snuva's Corner Cafe. So, welcome. First of all, could you introduce yourself to everyone? Tell us, everybody, uh, who you are, what you do, and where to find you. Um, my name is, uh, well, I go by Snuva, but uh, Dave, Dave's my name, and um, I uh, am the uh, writer of the blog Snuva's Corner Cafe. It's a uh, it's a GI Joe blog where I just kind of look at basically the eighty two to ninety four line, um, just looking at the figures and and uh, not so much the vehicles. I haven't really got into that yet, but and some top ten lists and just stuff that kind of uh, chronicles my thoughts on the line and stuff like that. Cool. Um, so uh, your name is Dave. You go by Snuva. I know some of us don't uh, always go by the name on our birth certificate. I, in fact, my, my birth certificate does not say Hooded Cobra Commander 788, so I think we're in the same <laughs> category there. Um, so uh, when did you get started with Snuba's Corner Cafe, and uh, what inspired it? Um, well, it started, um, it was 2019 is when the, the it started going through my head to do it. Um, and once COVID hit, uh, being stuck at home gave me a lot of time to start moving towards it. So I think I started it in, um, July, 2020. Was that Cobra Convergence 5? Um, uh, 2020, I, that, I'm pretty sure that would have been five. Yeah. Cause, um, yeah, I, I, I just created it in time and I actually posted a thing on Destro and then I talked to you and then actually pulled it down and kind of held it off and then reposted it when Cobra Convergence was going on. Um, as far as, uh, the Genesis for it starting, that actually kind of goes back to you. <laughs> I had, um, kind of just, I, my collection with Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers had grown to a massive um, proportions that was just, it was too much. And um, I just, we were moving and it just made sense to let stuff go. So I started letting stuff go and I was okay with it. And um, then I, uh, I was on YouTube one day and it gave me a recommended video of yours of the rat. And uh, I said to myself, I thought the rat, I go, man, that vehicle sucked. I wonder what this <laughs> is about it. So I watched it and I was cracking up and I agreed with you on it totally. And um, I was like, what else has this guy got? So then I started <laughs> binge watching your videos and then that kind of was the catalyst to restart it. Um, later on, um, I started checking out other content that was out there and I became friends with Chris Hemsworth of, uh, GI Joe 365. And, uh, I had actually ordered some stuff from him and I think something got kind of messed up. So he contacted me and then we ended up talking and then I just somewhere along the line said, yeah, I kind of would like to do something too, but I don't know what to do. And he's like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I'm a writer and. He's like, well, then you should write. And my wife was kind of on the same page. I mentioned it to her and she said, well, you're a writer. You should write. And, and so that that just, that was kind of it. And like I said, uh, 2020, the big old break, I just said, well, I'm going to do it. And just saw it. being at home, I just was writing like mad. And then that's where it fired off with Cobra Convergence 5. And it's been going ever since. That that is awesome. First of all, thank you. It's nice to know somebody is watching. That's that uh, I'm very <laughs> grateful. Um, and yeah, that that uh, time period during uh, you know 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, that sparked a lot of people to start some new projects. And so you've got one here. You've got it going. You mentioned that uh, you had collections beyond. Uh, G.I. Joe. What kind of things do you like uh, other than G.I. Joe? What else uh, kind of inspires you and in that uh, what do you like to either collect or talk about? Um, well, the um, the Star Wars is where it started. And then once, you know, Star Wars faded out, G.I. Joe was starting up. So it kind of I just kind of switched tracks. And then obviously Transformers uh, were a big part of it. Um, 
But uh, G.I. Joe, you know, kept going for a long time. Even after I walked away, it was kind of a comforting feeling knowing that it was still going, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I ended up kind of walking back into that world eventually. Um, but also, uh, I'm a musician as well. I'm a drummer. I play a little bit of guitar and stuff, so I do music as well. Um, at some point, I'd like to do something content-wise with music, but uh, I just haven't. I kind of I have a lot of focus on on this project now and I'm kind of just letting it roll and I don't know where this project will end. I feel like I'll know when I get there, but I, I don't even feel close. I keep finding more things to talk about and, and it doesn't take much. I could be at work and I could see a color scheme and I might say, oh, that looks like Lightfoot. And then I start thinking about Lightfoot and I'm like, you know what? That, it's funny this file card says this, and then then it just starts a whole thing. And I'm, okay, well that's the next guy I'm writing about, you know. That's uh, not I'm writing about. <laughs> that's just an example. Uh, no, that's that's great. Um, uh, you're you're a musician, which I think is fantastic. Uh, I am not. Uh, people pay me to not sing. Uh, <laughs> so like musical talent is like a voodoo magic to me. So congratulations on that. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, you've been involved in Cobra Convergence before. Do you have any uh, uh, special memories, anything that sticks out in your mind about Cobra Convergence? Um, yeah, I um, I mean, last year was great. Uh, I thought that that was my first time as a, as a full-fledged presenter. And I, I had put it in my head that I'm going to check out everything everybody did. And I believe I did. I mean, there was a lot out there. I can't. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you anything that I missed out on, but there was, there was a lot of stuff. Obviously I was looking forward to what you were going to be putting out. Um, my side of the laundry room, I knew, uh, I thought his was really cool. I think he did the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. He always does cool stuff. And, um, I think there was the, okay. I apologize to whoever, whoever's channel it is by no, uh, whoever had, I think it was far point collectibles on there. And oh. they're talking about the schemes of Cobra. Yeah, and that was um, I that a couple of times. That, that was, was peg warmers. Yeah. Peg warmers, our, yeah. Our friend. Yeah. Our friend Kevin from peg warmers. Yeah. That's I love that show and love that dude. Yeah. So that was one of my favorites. Like I said, I, I, I listened and watched that one a couple of times. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then so with, with my own, I had fun with the eel thing. We were going on a vacation uh to the beach and so i'm like this is perfect i'm taking that eel with me and so i got some pictures of him on the beach and stuff <laughs> that's that's awesome i was actually gonna um ask you to talk about what you did last year so you rolled right into it yeah um now uh for those who are watching uh we are recording this well in advance of the time that you will see it so we're rec recording this before cobra convergence starts but um i'll put you on the spot do you have thoughts ideas or inspirations yet at this point at this early stage for what you might do for cobra convergence seven i do i actually um uh back in january because that's what i actually looked up when you contacted me for six and it was in january so i was like okay um i need to be ready because if i get that call that you know then then i need to get things fired up so i already had my brain kind of churning and um i had something in mind i don't know if i should, should i even say it or well at the time people see this it should be up so you wouldn't be spoiling anything okay all right um i mean i guess it could change I, i've got a, i had two main things in the works but right now i'm uh i mean either one i think both of them will will be up at that time. Uh, but the one I'm, I'm looking at is the Crimson Guards, uh, looking at the four different Crimson Guards that came out. Uh, right now, the only problem is I still don't have the Python Crimson Guard. I have the other three. Um, that one's kind of hard because he's not a favorite figure and he's <laughs> so funny. So it's kind of like, wow. <laughs> That's kind of a tricky one, you know? So. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. So I've, I've thought about some different ways to go around that, um, but I, I might end up getting them. I've, I've, I've looked at it on eBay several times. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. There's well, a toy I like to go to an indie and I'm hoping they have it. And maybe I work out a deal or something. But Well, may the force be with you. Yeah, that's uh, that, that one's special. That one's special. Yeah. 
Um, and it's okay if it changes. You know what? If it changes <clears throat> and people don't end up seeing what you talk about here, that just stokes controversy, and that's how you become famous on the internet. So hey, it, it works either way, either way. So, uh, but I, I'm looking forward to um, to seeing what you do. I I always do. Um, and and thank you again for participating second year in a row, and I hope that you will come back. Um, let's uh, let's fire some softball questions. No, not softball. Let's fire some hardball questions uh -oh. at you. Uh -oh. There we you go. Know, let's put you on the hot seat. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. uh, do you have a favorite cobra? Since we're cobra themed, is there a cobra character that uh, speaks to you the most? Um, it, that's a hard question. Um. I'd say that, like, as far as looks go, when uh, Firefly came out, it was just wow. Um, and I think that that camo pattern, the the accessories, just his job, what he does, I think he is such a cool character. Unfortunately, uh, I was not on board with the whole lime green ninja thing that placed later. That kind of that kind of took him down a little notch. Sometimes I try to ignore that that part exists. I don't think that was necessarily a bad figure, but um, I don't see where anybody in their mind would say, you know what? Um, I want to stand out a little bit more when I'm doing my Sabbath. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this green outfit's probably the way to go. You know? that's, so. that's for when he's infiltrating Nickelodeon. You know, Nickelodeon <laughs> Studios, he like, has to wear the lime green. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the other hand, also, uh, Zartan was great. And then um, as far as like army builders, I really liked the Alley Viper, even though he also is loud. Um, I, I always I thought his uh, the shield was cool in the in the rifle. There's something about that rifle, even though it's got the weird offset clip. I always thought that guy was cool. And uh, as soon as I saw that Classified was doing him, I'm like, because I'm I'm getting Classified kind of sparingly. I'm getting favorites, but when I saw that they were doing him, I'm like, okay, I've I've got to do out. I got to buy that figure. So, Alley Viper has a lot of fans. Uh, 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 there are a lot of people drawn to that figure. Another one of our um, Cobra Convergence uh, collaborators, um, uh, Joe Motion Videos eighty two, Alley Viper favorite figure so yeah uh, people dig that one yes yeah, it's it's loud it's crazy but people are just drawn to it and i think that's amazing uh, yeah <laughs> it is a weird figure even i can say that but there's something about it i like <laughs> uh you mentioned you you kind of ta already talked a little bit about um how you got into gi joe but let's expand that a little bit um can you talk about like your early gi joe experiences and kind of what it meant to you when you were a young person kind of in it for the first time sure um well uh i still remember uh going to uh i think well i think it was called airway but it became target um but that's where i get my star wars figures and uh, i remember being down the toy aisle and just seeing all these gi joe figures and the there was a lot of hype with uh like commercials coming out and i'm just kind of like yeah i don't know you know and i remember looking at them and i thought that the accessories looked so much more like intricate than the star wars were star wars a lot of times you know they just had the one gun sometimes it wasn't even accurate to their character not saying it wasn't cool but sometimes it just wasn't the same and then um uh breaker was my first figure which actually was your first figure right? yeah yeah yes yeah i think the reason i got him was because he had the backpack and you put the the headset on his helmet and it connected yeah backpack and it was just like wow star wars didn't have anything like that yeah and uh, so that was my first figure and then i think for christmas i got the vamp and the howl and a couple other things and uh i had this weird theme when i first started getting them of getting figures that didn't have weapons i mean breaker didn't have guns clutch didn't have guns grand slam didn't have guns and then by the time series two rolled around, my first figure is Tripwire. He didn't have guns. <laughs> so I'm just kind of like, what's up? I have a bunch of G.I. Joe figures that have no weapons. <laughs> um, but but that changed eventually. I, I uh, got a couple others, you know, obviously kept growing. Um, but the G.I. Joe line uh, was so uh, unique in the fact that um, the, it, the stuff went together, you know, like... Um, uh, for for example, the uh, the headquarters, um, 
And actually, I didn't even know how intricate that was until I watched your video on it. I had no idea that the flak could fit in there. And I had the boat. And so I'm like, ah, or the uh, the uh, snowmobile. I had no idea that could mm-hmm. in there too. So, so it was cool that you could kind of piece things together as you wanted and, and everything. So I kind of think it left a little more to the imagination, you know, let your imagination run a little bit more. But again, one of the things for me is, and, and I think it's funny that the slogan is GI Joe is there because for me, it was there, you know, star Wars, it just kind of died, unfortunately. And transformers in my opinion came and then went and star and GI Joe kept going. And um, then, like I said, there was, you know, I got to high school and I started getting into music and stuff like that. And I said, okay, I need to be done with this now. So took a break and uh, it was, it was still there. GI Joe is still there. And so I would find myself every now and then going down the toy. I was kind of like, oh, see what they're doing now. You know, oh, Flint battles, you know, ecological warfare problems now, or, you know, <laughs> It's, it was weird. So, but my curiosity was still there. And I always read the comics. I never gave up on the comics. Even when yeah. I was collecting figures, I kept reading the comics. I tried to stop, but my curiosity kept going. So, um, so I just kept going with that. And then uh, uh, eventually it just came time. I was out of high school. Uh, one of my best friends actually uh, had got his first house and I was visiting. He was showing me around the house and he, we walked into this room and he said, you know what this room's going to be? And I said, no. And he goes, it's going to be my toy room. I'm going to start collecting Star Wars again. And I'm like, well, if you can collect Star Wars. I can collect G.I. Joe. So I'm going back. And then about that time, <laughs> they canceled G.I. Joe. <laughs> uh, so, but that's okay. That was okay because it made it easier to go back and get stuff rather than uh, keep going. Because I, I came back in 93, so it was hard to get all the new stuff and at the same time try to get the old stuff. But, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> so you, you came back uh, in 93. Is that when you um, became like a collector? Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, that, but that's still pretty early on. That was, uh, uh, the line was still had a little bit to go so um so you're a veteran you're a veteran collector uh yeah i was there all the way back in 82 when it started so yeah um (laughs) and i think it's interesting that it seems like almost everyone who started in 82 their first figure was either breaker or flash i should we we should uh, do a survey or something because there seems to be like Maybe there's like a personality uh, difference between the breakers and the flashes, but I think that's that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know. I thought about that. So you you started back in '93. So when you picked it up back in '93, um, it was very different. I mean, uh, from the way it was in '82. Um, oh, yeah. What do you remember from back then? Because uh, I think a lot of us, me included, didn't come back into it until much much later. Yeah um 93 it was it was again one of those kind of uh you know just happened to be in the toy aisle and and uh i had saw the crimson guard commander and um the artwork was cool i thought the artwork was cool even though he doesn't have the gun he has in the picture but um yeah i thought i thought i looked at it and it has the uh sculpted cobra symbol and stuff and i thought wow this is this is still pretty cool and he's red he's you know he's not yellow Um, so I was kind of like, I think that was the first one I bought, rebought, you know, kind of, kind of that kicked it off. And then I know that I got like the green heat viper and stuff and stuff, you know, shortly after, and he had all the green weapons. And on one hand, there's something cool about it. And on the other hand, there's something very bizarre about it. (laughs) Um, and again, it goes back to, I like it, but I don't know. It's still different. I, I, there's something different. It was different about sci-fi's lime green than there was uh, with the heat viper one, but um, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to, I don't know. It makes sense to me. Probably no one else, but, um, but it was, it was still fun. There was still, like I said, GI Joe was there. I liked a lot of the ideas. Um, I actually liked a lot of the star brigade figures and, um, the alien thing again was a weird twist on it um, and what I didn't expect, but uh, 
yeah, you know, it's like, so I don't know. Um, when, uh, and then they canceled it. And then I remember being kind of like, what do I do now? <laughs> you know? So <clears throat> that, that about the time though, I started getting back into star Wars. Mm-hmm. Cause they traded, they traded hands, you know, and right. in 82 or 83 was the last star Wars movie. And it kind of ended for me there. Well, 82 is the first line of first year of GI Joe. Now you're flipping it the opposite way where 94 is the last year of GI Joe and star Wars starts again in 95. So I kind of went back that direction, but I still kept getting GI Joe stuff as I could find it. And the good thing was, is back in 95, nobody wanted it. Um, One one of the weirdest things for me was I didn't even know about night force. I I didn't have a Toys R Us near me. So I totally missed the boat on that. And so did my friends that I grew up with. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody knew anything about it. Um, I was at a toy shop uh, a couple, about an hour away from where I live and they had a box. It was like a uh, Girl Scout cookie box, just full of figures. And I found two Night Force figures in there. I think they were like a buck a piece. And the guy, I felt like he was inviting people to steal them. They were right. <laughs> and the guy didn't like me either, because because when I came in, I'm looking at the cheap stuff. Where my my one of my best friends, Bobby, he's looking at all the Star Wars stuff, which is you know, all the, all the rage at the time again. And so this guy, <laughs> he's kind of like, yeah, yeah, take your, take your figures. I'm like, yeah, I will. <laughs> so it was a good opportunity for me to, to really kind of advance my collection. You know, I think a lot of us wish we had started back then, uh, considering the inflation of prices since then. I think that, uh, the, the idea of, coming across a couple night force figures in a box is quite tantalizing. Yeah. Um, but they, they did, <clears throat> they did uh, kind of bring out GI Joe again in, I think around 97, they started uh, issuing some recolored, you know, reissued stuff, not new, but kind yeah. of uh, putting out some new stuff there. Did you, did you get into any of that? Um, did when it came back around kind of as a nostalgia product? I, I actually didn't i i wanted to but like um I, whether it was like a stars and stripes set or something i think yeah, and yeah i was looking like the skin tones looked all off and yeah. the it wasn't all the original figures and mm-hmm. I, it was like it was such a good idea but i felt like somebody kind of missed something along the line you know like i don't know it, it so much care went into the beginning that it seemed like whatever was going on now, that same consideration wasn't being taken. It was almost like, um, you know, hey, let's make a few extra bucks, you know, or something, you know, we got these molds or something. So I, I really didn't. Um, I uh, Once the 2007 figures came out uh, for the 25th, I grabbed. quite a few of those. Um, And that was kind of funny because I was actually working nights and uh, some, we got done really early and um, supervisor just said, Hey, I don't need to go home. And I'm like, all right, bye. So I just went to Walmart because I'm like, wow, it's, you know, I'm still wide awake and everything. And I feel like I, you know, I'm not going to go home and sleep now. You know, I don't know. So I went out to Walmart. I, I didn't know they were even that was a thing. I, I just was like, where did these come from? So yeah, I had to, I think I bought snake eyes and storm shadow right there. And then, and, uh, uh, I, I grabbed a couple others, but they kept going with it. And, and I was starting to get, again, it was kind of when I was at that overwhelmed stage and I was, I was like, I don't know how much more stuff I could just keep adding in five. Yeah, it was just, it was, I did get to, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was wondering um, if, uh, I mean, since you've been a collector since so far back, I was wondering uh, if you continued and picked up some of the new stuff, but it does sound like you got into the 25th anniversary um, and I guess that was GI Joe for quite a while until more recently. Um, yeah. so, 
Uh, and you mentioned you you pick up uh, classified here and there. Uh, anything new that you like to pick up? What do you look for if if you're looking down the toy aisle for for GI Joe? Um, well, the the classified, like I said, I was just kind of grabbing favorites. the The price point was pretty high, um, or is pretty high. Yeah, but. Um, I have been lucky and have um, scored a couple of these latest figures on clearance. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm not going to argue it. Um, I did miss Dusty, though. I, I couldn't get Dusty at the time, so I kind of stowed him away, and I came back for him. He was gone, so I was, I was kind of bummed about that. Um, but the otherwise, um, the uh, G.I. Joe, those Jada um, mm -hmm. die kind of bigger ones, those are amazing. I wish I've got all three of the ones. Uh, I wish they just, I wish they'd go gangbusters with that. I think I'd probably buy them all. Um, Cause I really liked uh, back in the day, um, the star Wars action fleet and they had the small vehicles with the small figures. I thought that was uh, a really cool line. Um, and I wish uh, they would kind of do something like that with GI Joe. Um, classified, nope. you know, it's a, it's such a big footprint on your shelves. Yeah. So. Um, uh, uh, and those, those Jada sets, those are, those are really cool. Um, yeah. I would, I would like to remind everybody Snuva's Corner Cafe is presenting for Cobra Convergence 7. Um, there will be a link uh, in the description of this video. So you can go straight there and check it out. By the time you see this, this should, this will go up on the same day as Snuva's Corner Cafe's, Cobra Convergence 7 content. So uh, skip on over there, please, right away. As soon as we're done here, wait till we're done. <laughs> but then when we're done, uh, skip on over there. Make sure you check them out. Um, and check out, like, you've been you've been doing this now for a while. So you have a significant back catalog. So, um, so go check that out. Um, can you tell people, uh, if they do check out your back catalog, what can they expect to see? Um, like I said, I, I've, uh, I've done top 10 lists and stuff like that, which is really fun. Another thing that I do that, uh, I think is fun, uh, personally is that there's a couple childhood friends that I grew up with, uh, that also collected GI Joe. And I do a thing called one word reviews with them. Uh, a long time ago, one of my friends that moved away would, uh, when subsequent GI Joe lines would come out, he would send me a list of the figures and a one word thought on each one. So I've challenged these other buddies of mine that you can only use one word and you can't reuse it. And I think it's been kind of easy, but now it's the we're getting ready to do series six now, I think. And it, the line's growing, so they uh -huh. got a word. So there's more there's more of a challenge to it and stuff. And uh, you're gonna have to pick up a thesaurus. You're gonna run out of words. Exactly. Yeah, you can only say awesome or stupid once, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but, series six, there's both. <laughs> Uh, that that is awesome. I hope everybody uh, checks out Snuva's Corner Cafe again. Link is in the description, um, and we are about out of time. So before we wrap up, I would like to turn the floor over to you uh, for any last uh, last minute comments you would like to uh, give to our audience. Um, I don't know. I thank everybody for uh, joining in. I thank all the presenters. I thank you for uh, all the people that check out the content. Um, it's cool to connect with other collectors. It's, it's fun to uh, bounce things off of one another about um, it may be why a certain figure is, uh, is cool or important to you, um, whereas, you know, maybe another one's not or, uh, you know, just any of that. Uh, it's, it's, it just makes for a fun connection. The G.I. Joe community is really tight. And that's part of what kind of helped pull me back is I was like, wow, these people are just like me, you know, I'm like we're all kind of we all have a, a common thread that runs through our lives you know i mean we all do different things but uh again it goes back to gi joe is there you know and it again it's it's there and it's cool whenever you know i meet, even meet somebody you know one of my co-workers just you know one time we were talking and i just said something about gi joe and he's like i used to have the mobile command center and i'm like i didn't and there, there's a conversation you know and so it's just cool. It's, it's a fun thing. I think everybody should uh, take time to try to check out as much of it as you possibly can, because as fun as I think mine is for me, there's so much awesome 
uh, hooded cobra commander on on Sundays as part of my Sunday ritual. I, I get off work, you know, if I if I work Sundays, I get off at six. That's right about the time the video goes on. Perfect timing. So yeah, I really enjoy it. It's fun. And uh, I thank everybody for being a part of it, uh, whether it's my blog or just the GI Joe community or anything. It's, it's a good time. Well, thank you for being a part of it. And thank you for taking some time to talk with me. Uh, we will wrap it up there. I'll remind everybody, go check out Snooba's Corner Cafe. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, uh, Cobra. Cobra. <laughs>